All of y'all are, well, you're all children at heart, right? All right. I'm going to give you the message, knowing that perhaps there are children that will watch it online afterwards. So, what I was going to ask them, I'm going to ask you, do y'all like to read? Yeah. Raise your hand if you like to read. I like to read. What kind of books do you like to read? Who likes to read like murder mysteries? Okay. Who likes to read science fiction? Okay. Who likes to read westerns? None of you like westerns? Oh, come on now. Back in the day, I loved westerns. Did you raise your hand for westerns? Oh. <laughs> yes, it's just me. Back in the day when I was in high school, westerns were what I loved to read. And what I've just got done reading, and I probably will go back, is actually a series called The Dark Tower. Believe it or not, it mixes westerns with science fiction fantasy and kind of like a murder mystery. It's all rolled up into one. I also like reading, of course, as a pastor, I like reading the Bible. And I like reading things that talk about Jesus and talk about what we believe. How many of time when you're reading, do you come across a word or a phrase you don't understand? Yeah, happens to me, especially when I'm reading theological stuff. So what do you do? If you're a child, you could go to your parents, right, and ask them what this means. And not just the definition of words, but parents are there to help their children understand what we confess and believe about Jesus. But there's also the internet. I will take phrases or words that I don't understand and I'll look them up online and I'll even write them down in the margins of that page so I remember what it is for later, for later use. There's plenty of places in scripture you read and maybe you scratch your head and trying to figure out what exactly is being saying here. Well, we have Philip the eunuch, or we have the eunuch, the Ethiopian eunuch. He's reading the prophecy of Isaiah. Kind of hard to understand. He doesn't get it. But does the Lord want him to get it? Yeah. So the Lord sends an angel who sends Philip to go meet him. Philip walks up to him and engages him in dialogue. Do you understand what you're reading? The Ethiopian says no. And Philip is there to explain to him. And he doesn't just explain to him definition of words. What does he do? He tells him how that very verse and the rest of Scripture points to Jesus as that eunuch's Lord and Savior. And through that, the Holy Spirit works faith in that man's heart. So much so that he wants baptism. And at this point, it would be kind of a wild thing because, well, the church, which is mostly Jewish people, they're thinking... Well, this is okay for Jews, but is it really for Gentiles? Yeah, it's for everyone. That's why the angel sent Philip to this Gentile. He's baptized, he receives the Holy Spirit, and what's his reaction? He rejoices! And then Philip, done with what he's doing, doesn't stay around to receive accolades from the eunuch. He is sent off to continue to share the gospel. When children come up, Jesus puts me here to help them understand. And the biggest thing I want them to understand is who Jesus is for them. That he's their Lord and Savior who loves them so very much, who gave his life for them and rose again so they could have life with him now and eternal life to come. And I try to tell it in a way that they could go out and share it with people around them. Adults that maybe they run into, if not their parents, maybe it's uncles, aunts, grandparents, friends at school. And they aren't going to be able to get in deep theological discussions, but it's that one simple message that they can share and help people understand. Because as they share it, it's not just them, it's the Holy Spirit. Just like the Holy Spirit worked through Philip, he can work through that child and he can work through you. It's as easy as saying, God loves you. So much that Jesus gave his life for you and rose again so that you can know he lives with you now all the way to eternal life to come. He wants you to believe in him. The Holy Spirit can use that to create faith in anyone, even your friends that don't believe. Let's pray together and ask Jesus to help us be that witness. 
And you can repeat after me. Dear Jesus, Jesus, help us us to tell others others who Jesus is is and what he has done. And And through us, us, bring people to faith. faith. In his name we pray. Amen. Thank you all for listening. You all were wonderful, wonderful children that listened. We're going to continue on now with our worship service with uh, Fruitful Trees, the Spirit Sowing.